Hello, students. Welcome to TV Learning Program. My name is Benon. I will be taking Senior One students in biology. Students, before we start our lesson today, allow me to ask you two important things. One, pay attention and actively participate in this lesson. When I say actively participate in this lesson, I just need you to follow all the steps of the lesson. Hope you will enjoy the lesson. Let us think about things we see in our environment, more especially those that are living. Can you give examples of living things we see in our environment? Let it be plants or animals. Example, cows. Very good. Cows. Another example, human. Goats. And even plants. Excellent. We say that these organisms are living because they feed, they grow, they reproduce, they can move from one place to another, they sense the environment when it is hot or cold, they excrete waste products. So those are some of the factors we consider when we are saying that these organisms are living. And remember, they also have different parts. Let us take an example of this plant. Here I have a plant in front of me which has different parts. Can we mention those parts that make this plant? Very good. We have roots. We have stem. We have leaves. We also have flowers. So this plant is living and it has different parts. Let us also take another example of human. You and I have different parts. Who can give example? Very nice. Digestive system. We can even give many others, like respiratory system, reproductive system, circulatory system, muscular system, skeletal system, and others. Those are body systems. And they have different organs. Excellent. Organs like the heart, organs like ear, organs like eyes, lungs, and others. Those organs have also small structures. Do you know those small structures? Who can mention them? Tissues, very nice. Which means tissues are smaller than organs. And who can also mention another part of the body that is smaller than a tissue? Cell, very good. So we have seen that our body has cells, it has tissues, it has organs, and body systems. We have cells, then tissues, organs, and then body systems. And body systems make the entire organism. Make the entire organism. From here, we can talk about cells, 
which make a tissue. In other words, we can say a cell is a group of tissues. We can also say from this part, we can also say that a tissue is a group of cells. Okay? A tissue is a group of cells. An organ is a group of tissues. And then the body system is a group of organs. All organs of the body make the entire organism. From here, we can get our lesson today. The lesson today will be cells. And who can define a cell? A cell is cell is a basic unit of living organism. A cell is a basic unit of living organisms. And how do we call the study of cells? Excellent cytology. Cytology is the study of cells. How do we call a person who studies cells? Yes, is called cytologist. Cytologist is a scientist who studies cells. Then these cells have different types. We have two main types of cells. We have what we call prokaryotic cell. We also have what we call eukaryotic cell. Then, how are these two types of cells different? Prokaryotic cell doesn't have a true nucleus. And eukaryotic cell has a true nucleus. That is the main difference. Two types of cells, prokaryotic cell, which doesn't have a true nucleus, and eukaryotic cell, which has a true nucleus. When we go to eukaryotic cells, we have uh, two more types. We have plant cell. We also have animal cell. These are cells which have true nucleus. This is a plant. It has cells, and those cells are called plant cells. You and I have cells. Those cells are called animal cells. Even other organisms, other animals, have cells. Now, these plant and animal cells we can see them here. This is animal cell. This one is plant cell. Let us start with animal cell. This animal cell you see here has different parts. You can see we have what we call cell membrane, which is this outer part of the cell. It also has nucleus, small vacuole, cytoplasm, and mitochondria. Do you think these parts are important to the cell? Yes, they are very important. Let us see one by one. When we talk about cell membrane, it is 
Very important. Why? As you see, it is the outermost part of the cell, which means it can protect the internal parts of the cell. We have cell membrane. One of the functions of cell membrane is to protect the internal parts of the cell. Another function, this cell you see, allows materials to go in and out. And that means it is an important function of the cell membrane. We can give examples of materials which go inside the cell and outside the cell. This cell needs oxygen. Oxygen can enter into the cell. This cell needs food nutrients like proteins, glucose, vitamins, and mineral salts. They can enter into the cell. This cell needs water, which can enter into the cell. And then when those food nutrients go into the cell, then the cell uses them by the process we call metabolism. When those nutrients are used, that means waste products can also be produced. Waste products like carbon dioxide, that means it has to come out of the cell. Then, in that sense, we say that the cell membrane is very important to allow materials to go inside the cell and outside the cell. We have seen two functions of the cell membrane, protecting the internal parts of the cell and allowing materials to go in and out of the cell. Then from there, we also have what we call nucleus. You see this middle part of the cell? It is called nucleus. Nucleus is also important to the cell. How is it important? It contains genetic materials of the cell. It contains genetic materials of the cell. Here we can give examples. Genes, very good. Genes, we find them inside the nucleus. Then DNA and chromosomes. Those are materials we find inside the nucleus. Have you ever heard of the term DNA? It stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Those are genetic materials we find in the nucleus of the cell. And they are very important in determining the characteristics of our body. Also, when parents are producing children, they transfer some of the characteristics to their children through genetic materials we find inside the nucleus. The nucleus is also important because it controls, controls activities, activities of the cell. Another function of the nucleus is to control activities of the entire cell. What do we mean here? We can give examples of different activities like growth, growth, protein synthesis, and we can also give example of cell division. These are some of the activities that the nucleus controls. Growth, 
Remember, plants need to grow. Remember, organisms need to grow. So that is controlled by the nucleus. Then, for protein synthesis, it's a very simple to understand. It means making proteins. Proteins are needed by our body. We can give example of proteins that are made by the cells of our body, and they are very important. Let us talk about enzymes. Proteins, we can give examples of enzymes. We can give examples of hormones. We can give examples of antibodies. We can give examples of hemoglobin. We also have other proteins that make structures of our body, and they are very important, like collagen, keratin, and elastin. So you can see these are some of the examples of proteins made by our body. And it is the nucleus to control this process. Enzymes speed up chemical reactions in the body. We can have enzyme like pepsin, enzyme like maltase, and lactase. Those are enzymes that speed up chemical reactions in the body. For hormones, we can give example of insulin and glucagon. Very important to regulate or to control the amount of sugar in our blood. Then we also have hemoglobin. This one we find it in red blood cells. It's very important in transporting oxygen to body cells. And also carbon dioxide from body cells to respiratory organ. Then we have antibodies. These ones are very important in protecting our body from diseases. They are part of the immune system. Then we have collagen. This one we can find it in our hair. We can find it in our nails. We can also find it in our skin. Very important. Then we have, I'm sorry, collagen. We can find it in tendons, ligaments, and bones. Keratin, we can find it in our hair, in our nail and skin. Then elastin, we can find it in the uterus of female reproductive system. We can also find it in red blood cells and lungs. Those are examples of proteins which are very important in our body. That's why we say the nucleus is very important in protein synthesis. It is also important in cell division. Remember, organisms need to grow. So body cells have to divide and become many so that the entire organism can grow. This plant needs to grow, so the cells within the plant have to divide and become many so that it can grow. Some of our body cells die, and when they die, they need to be replaced by others. So in that case, it is very important for cells to divide. So the nucleus is very important in controlling activities of the body. We also have, we also have small vacuole. The small vacuole you can see, those ones are very important in storing waste products to prevent other parts of the cell from being contaminated. Then in the vacuole, we can also find there are nutrients. Then it also provides pressure, which is needed for strengthening the cell. We have cytoplasm. Within the cytoplasm, 
that's where we find other small structures within the cell. Then from there, we have mitochondria. Mitochondria is very important because they call it the powerhouse of the cell. I repeat this. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. What does it mean? It provides energy needed by the cell. Because we have seen the cell performs different functions. So those Functions need energy. That energy is provided by mitochondria. And mitochondria, we find it in the cytoplasm. This is the animal cell, which has different parts that perform different functions. Those small parts, we call them organelles. When we say organelle, we mean the small specialized structure of the cell. Example of a small specialized structure or organelle we find in the cell is mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. So we also have the small vacuole. We have seen it. It is another example of organelle. Now let us go to the plant cell. The plant cell has some parts we find in the animal cell. It also has some parts we don't find in the animal cell. Let us say cell wall. This cell wall is the outermost part of the plant cell. It is made up of cellulose. Cell wall, which is made up of cellulose. This cell wall is very important and tough because it determines the rectangular shape of the plant cell. It also allows materials to go in and out, but in most cases, it prevents the plant cell from bursting. Then we have cell membrane, we have seen it in animal cell. Cytoplasm, we have seen it. Then there is also chloroplast. Chloroplast. Chloroplast is an organelle. Remember, organelle means a structure which has specific function or specialized function. So the function of the chloroplast is photosynthesis. This chloroplast has a pigment we call chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. When we say pigment, we mean colored substance. So this one is green, and that is what makes plants green. So chloroplast is very important in photosynthesis. Then as you see, this plant cell in the middle, it has the vacuole, the large central vacuole, which has what we call cell sap. And then inside this large vacuole, we can find there Nutrients, which are needed by the plant cell. It can also store waste products to prevent other parts of the plant cell from being contaminated. It also has pressure inside, which is very important because it determines the shape of the plant cell. Then the cytoplasm. We have said 
cytoplasm. That's where chemical reactions take place. And that's also where we find small structures we have called cell organelles. Example, we have given mitochondria, it's an organelle. Chloroplast is an organelle. Vacuole is an organelle. Those are small structures inside the cell which have specific functions. Now, students, we have seen animal cell. We have also seen plant cell. Which means we can compare them. Similarities between plant and animal cells. When you come here, you can see that both cells have cell membrane. Both cells have nucleus. Both cells have mitochondria. Both cells have cytoplasm. Both cells have small vacuole. So those are some of the parts which are common in both cells. Yes, those are some parts that are common in both plant and animal cells. Then we also have some parts which are in plant cell and they are not in animal cell. Example, cell wall, chloroplast. And when you see even the size of the vacuole is different. The plant cell has a big central vacuole the animal cell has small vacuoles which are scattered aside. Dear students, we have seen plant and animal cells. We have seen different parts. And here I have your homework. The first question is define each of the following terms, unicellular, multicellular, and organelle. Question number two, what are the similarities and differences between plant and animal cells. If you have followed all the steps of the lesson, you have seen that. Question number three, which organelle in the cell makes energy? The powerhouse of the cell. Which organelle is that? What is the function of the following parts of the cell? That is question number four. Nucleus, cell membrane, chloroplast, and cell wall. Thank you very much for your active participation for paying attention, enjoy the rest of the day.